Do you know about Angry Joe? Well, if so, you can skip to this point in the video. But if you aren't so much aware of him, then then stick around and I'll get you up to speed. Austin, Texas, June 18th, 1984. Jose Antonio Vargas emerges from his mother's vaginal cavity for the first and hopefully only time. Growing up with Shaq Fu, Plumbers Don't Wear Ties, Bubs B 3D, and Superman 64, he developed a lifelong love for video games. This, along with his critical and discerning eye, vibrant personality, and lack of connections in Hollywood, led him to create a YouTube channel centered around video game criticism, discussion, and reviews. Dubbing himself Angry Joe, he started the Angry Joe Show YouTube channel on October 3rd, 2008, at the ripe old age of 24. And after nearly 11 years, the channel is still going strong. Over all these years, Angry Joe has become most widely known for his painfully awkward interview with Jeff Keighley at the 2010 Spike Video Game Awards. But besides that, Angry Joe has become most widely known for his painfully awkward interview with Major Nelson at E3 2013. But putting that aside, he is most known for his angry reviews of various newly released video games. He is without a doubt one of the top dogs in the YouTube space when it comes to game reviews, though he does not review anywhere close to as many games as, say, ACG, or Game Ranks, or Skill Up, or Worth a Buy, or Jim Sterling, or Nick930. But there's a good reason for that. His reviews aren't just reviews, they're shows. There are skits with costumes, recurring characters, catchphrases, questionably keyed green screens, and more. Contrary to the name Angry Review, Joe doesn't just scream into the camera for 20 minutes. The reviews are typically in-depth, well thought out, and trustworthy. And yes, he does get angry from time to time. Funnily enough, he seems to get more well-spoken the angrier he gets. But throughout the years, there is nary a time I can recall when an angry review has led me astray. And that's really what matters in the end. The strange thing about the Angry Joe Show channel is that, though he is well known for his angry game reviews, he actually has more movie reviews on the channel. He has an incredibly diverse array of content, from weekly news to countdown videos to angry rants to trailer reactions and even vlogs. Of the over 1,600 videos uploaded to the channel, just less than 1 in 8 of them are angry game reviews. Now the exact number is a little difficult to nail down for reasons I'll get into soon, but that is quite a small fraction of Angry Joe's content. I thought it would be interesting if we took a deep dive into the numbers of his angry reviews and perhaps see some interesting trends that have emerged over these 11 years. Why do this, you ask? Why now? I honestly have no idea. So let's get started! Since I'm only interested in his video game angry reviews for this video, and none of the other uploads, we must first create a list of all the pertinent videos. This is a playlist of his angry reviews on the channel, but if you sort through his entire video library, you'll see some that are missing from this playlist. Angry Joe used to have a website that cataloged each review, but this stopped being updated in 2015. Even worse, the list of videos on the website does not perfectly match the playlist videos dated from 2015 and before, so it seems even Joe doesn't know which videos to count as angry reviews. Once you get back to pre-2011 videos, things are the murkiest. Some videos are clearly angry reviews, but they are called something slightly different. Some videos are parody reviews. Should these count? I had to make a judgment call for quite a few of these videos and I ultimately decided to exclude any videos with parody review in the title, no matter how sincere Joe seems in the video. There were also some videos that went on a case-by-case -case basis, like the Star Trek Online video, that I decided to exclude because they are not structured at all like a normal Angry Joe review. The only ruling I made that might be controversial is the exclusion of the Telltale Back to the Future Episode 1 Angry Review, which I excluded because it covers only one part of a five-part game. Oh, and of course Rapid Fire Reviews don't count either, obviously. So here is the final list of games covered in an Angry Review, all 184 of them. Now that's nice and all, but not all that interesting. But before moving forward, I think it would be helpful to divide the history of angry reviews into different periods and eras. 
I identified two eras in the history of angry reviews. The earlier one I will call the pre-modern era, and the second, the modern era. The two eras are primarily split based on when Angry Joe videos began being uploaded in HD, which started with his Dragon Age 2 review on March 13th, 2011. The pre-modern era is further broken down into two periods. The earlier period I will call the partial review period, since during this time Joe would oftentimes edit out chunks of his review and put the full review up on his website. This period ends with his StarCraft II Wings of Liberty review on July 31st, 2010. If you notice the asterisks with certain games in the list I showed, they were referring to games with only partial reviews on YouTube. The later period of the pre-modern era doesn't really need a name since I'll never refer to it again, but I'll name it the Sonic Freeriders period, cause why not? Now the modern era is split into three periods. The oldest period I will call the growth period, because, well, his audience grew immensely during that time. Then, starting after the GTA 5 review, so past September 2013, comes the slowdown period, where review uploads slowed down. We'll go into detail about that soon, but for now, the biggest clue into this new period is that for the first time ever, Angry Joe didn't upload a video in the month of October, one of the most important months for games every year. The most recent period begins with the South Park The Fractured But Whole review on October 31st, 2017. Why then? Well, this is the first Angry Review to come out in a post-Rapid Fire Review world. I felt it was a good demarcation since Rapid Fire Reviews are a bit controversial, though I'm personally fine with them. So this most recent period will be called the Rapid Fire Period. Okay, with all that terminology stuff out of the way, let's talk about Angry Review scores. The fact that Angry Joe gives each game he reviews a score was one of the main reasons why I chose to do an analysis of his reviews over others. It gives me something objective I can work with. Surprisingly, there aren't many YouTube game reviewers that give out scores nowadays, most opting to give some sort of conclusionary statement about whether the game is worth checking out or not. Let's see how Angry Joe rates games. This is every review score Joe has given in chronological order. From his first review, Far Cry 2, to his most recent review at the time of me making this video, Borderlands 3. 7 is his most common rating, with 35 of his 184 reviews being a 7 out of 10. A score of 6 and 8 are his second most common, just ahead of 9. Scores of 1 and 10 are equally rare, with just 6 reviews for each. If we plot his reviews over time, we can see that there is a slight trend upwards, meaning Joe has only gotten a little softer in his reviews over the years. But as you may notice, the R squared value is really small. If you don't know, the R squared value basically tells you how well of a fit the trend line is for the data. An R squared value of 1 means a perfect fit, and a 0 means no fit at all. Typically, in science, you want an R squared value for your data to be at least a minimum of 0.95. In psychology, an R squared value of 0.5 can be really good sometimes. For the purposes of this video, I will show the R squared values for each trend line, and they will typically be below 0.1. That however does not mean that the trend line is useless, it just means that there is a lot of variance, and accurate predictions cannot be made for future angry reviews. Also, R squared values make it easier to compare the amount of correlation between sets of variables. So for example, is there a higher correlation between review score and like to dislike ratio, or between review score and video length? I'll be sticking to linear trend lines for simplicity's sake, but may use a quadratic trend line when I feel it is appropriate. Let's get back to discussing the Angry Joe review scores. Interestingly, Joe hasn't given out a 1 rating since February 14th, 2017, which is the longest time since he's given out a particular review score. But the largest gap ever between any two of the same review scores was April 30th, 2013 to November 26th, 2018. A gap of 2,035 days where Joe didn't give out a single 3 out of 10 score. Just counting the years 2010 through 2018, the year which had the highest average score was 2017, and the worst average score was for 2013. Now let's talk about upload schedule. In short, Joe doesn't have one. Here's a representation of every day from his first angry review until today. The blue boxes are days which Joe uploaded an angry review, and white boxes were days that were immensely sad for me and every other angry Joe fan. You can see that starting off, Joe's uploads were extremely inconsistent. 
He went 136 days between his first and second reviews, and 96 between his second and third reviews. Let's ignore these upload gaps, since they aren't at all representative of his channel's history. Plotting all the number of days between reviews, you can see that there is an upward trend, meaning Joe has taken more and more time between uploads, on average, over time. Looking back at this, you can also see that the top half seems to have a slightly higher density of blue boxes compared to the bottom. So the longest gap he ever took between reviews was 101 days, from June 6th to September 16th, 2017. This is quite a notorious time for the Angry Joe channel, as some fans began to turn on him for taking a break from his angry reviews, and seemingly putting more effort into making other types of videos. The most frequent number of days between uploads is 6 days, which has occurred 11 times. Here are the number of reviews he did per year. Once you reach 2010, the number of reviews per year has trended down. Of course, 2019 isn't over yet, so who knows how many more reviews there will be. And here are the number of reviews by month. Surprisingly, Joe has uploaded the least number of reviews in December months, at only 6. Second is January, less surprising. March and November are tied for having the most reviews at 23 each. If you notice, this graph seems oddly symmetrical. And crazily enough, Joe has uploaded the same number of reviews in the first half of the year as he has in the second half. How many times do you think there have been three or more angry reviews uploaded within the same month of a year? Well, that's happened 19 times. 13 of those times there were three reviews within that month. Four times it was four reviews in that month. And Joe has uploaded five reviews in a single month just two times, March 2010 and February 2012. Of all these months of increasing activity, only six of them have occurred since the slowdown period began. That's past September 2013 if you don't remember my extraordinarily intuitive and helpful period and era naming system. Looking at uploads by the day of the week, Tuesday is the most common day for a review to come out with 34 in total, and Monday is the least common with 18. If we split his 184 reviews in half and compare the first 92 against the most recent 92, we can compare how his weekly upload tendencies have shifted. As you can see from this graph, he went from uploading most on Sunday and Saturday to uploading more on Tuesday, but also Friday. He also uploaded double the number of videos on Monday compared to before. Let's now have a look at the length of his reviews, because there are a few things to note. His average review length is 24 minutes, 8 seconds. Plotting his review lengths over time, you can clearly see that they have been getting longer. His shortest review is Fruit Ninja Connect at 8 minutes, 59 seconds. His longest review is Anthem at 50 minutes, 41 seconds. But something kind of interesting happens when you map the cumulative duration of every review, and the number of days that have passed since the very first angry review. The Dayline gains an early lead since Joe didn't upload much at the beginning. Finally, the number of minutes of angry reviews catches up to the number of days since the first review came out, with the Star Wars Battlefront 2 review on November 22nd, 2017. Then the days retake the lead, but the minutes catch back up with the Fallout 76 review on November 26th, 2018. And they haven't given up the lead since. We can plot video length versus days since last review upload to see if there is a trend and I'm excluding the partial review period for obvious reasons. And there does seem to be a trend. The longer a video is, the number of days since the last review tends to be greater. The relationship between review score and video length is also something to note. Linearly, there doesn't seem to be a trend, so I think it's more useful to look at the average video length per review score. A 5 score is the longest on average at 29 minutes 48 seconds. Let's move on to view counts. I gathered most data points about three weeks ago, and only updated the most recent 10 or so review counts as late as possible, since those are the ones primarily getting the most new views. So some of these numbers might be off by 10,000 or so, which isn't all that big in the grand scheme of things. Angry Joe's average video gets 2.38 million views. Just counting the modern era though, he averages 2.85 million views per review. Here are his view counts plotted over time. 
I decided to use a polynomial trend line rather than a linear one because it fits much better. As you can see, his views peaked around 2014 to 2015 and have been on a slight decline. You can also see that from the average view counts per year. Now to be fair, the older the review, the more time it has had to gather up views, so it's not totally fair to be comparing lifetime view counts between old and new videos. His most watched review is the Destiny Angry review from September 21st, 2014. His least watched review is Secret Service with just under 100,000 views. But that was his second review after all. So his least watched review from the modern era is Unravel 2 with 330,000 views. We can plot the number of views a review has against other variables to see if there's some interesting correlations. View count versus review score. Possibly a faint correlation? View count versus number of days since last review. A bit stronger correlation, which becomes stronger when you exclude the partial review period. View count versus video length. That's what I call correlation. And finally, the last data point I wish to cover is the like to dislike ratio. I will present this data as a percent of all ratings that are likes. So the lower the percentage, the higher ratio of dislikes. The average like percentage is 95%. There are two reviews which are tied for the most disliked, Alpha Protocol and Risen, with 74% like percentages for both. Since those are partial reviews, perhaps the higher dislikes is due to the entire review not being there. So the lowest like percentage from a non-partial review is for Sleeping Dogs at 86%, then comes Black Ops 4 at 87%, and Batman Arkham Knight at 88%. That means there are only three reviews from the modern era below 90% likes, which I find remarkable given Joe's controversiality. He has 24 reviews with 98% likes, and none with 99 or 100%. And interestingly, there's no correlation between like ratio and number of views. However, if you exclude the partial review period, then there does appear to be a correlation. A more disliked video tends to get more views. Well, I think that's all I have to say about the Angry Joe Show Angry Reviews. I hope you found at least one statistic interesting, and maybe learned a thing or two, or three, or four, or five, or six, or seven, or eight, or nine, or ten, or eleven.